What can you do if you have two days to spend in a city that never sleeps? This is how I spent 48 hours in Bangkok. Now, first of all, the most expensive thing about Thailand is getting there. Everything else is super affordable. Accommodations, food, transportation, it's all very low price. I found in my case that the US dollar went a very long way. Morning, here we are day one in Bangkok. I got in really late last night. Didn't end up getting to sleep until about four o'clock in the morning. So I'm getting kind of a late start today, but I do have faith that we can get all the things done for today and tomorrow. First, I'm gonna go to the MBK Shopping Center. I hear that that's a pretty big deal, so we're gonna go check that out. So I'm excited about it. Should be a great day. Let's get started. shops. Now it is pretty accessible by BTS Railway. It's pretty easy to get here from multiple points. The uh, overhead pedestrian walkways seem to all connect here. So right away my first observation is that it's super air conditioned which is a plus because it is hot and humid in Thailand. I'll be the first to tell you that I hate shopping malls. I usually try to avoid them at all costs, but this I feel like was totally worth it because I made out like a bandit. Okay, I saw this thing at my feet and nearly freaked out. going up to the 5th and 6th floor of the MBK. Apparently there's some really good dining up there. Thai iced tea in Thailand. I am in heaven. Green curry chicken is one of my favorite dishes that I've ever had. I've never had it in Thailand, so we're about to experience some yumminess here. I'm pretty excited about this. Here it goes. Mm. Amazing. Really flavorful. Just a little spicy. Definitely has a kick to it. This does not suck. So I think the most amazing part about this whole meal is that it comes with a whole bunch of food. It's a ton of food. There's no way I'm going to be able to eat all this. Um, but I got it all for 129 baht, which works out to be around 4 US dollars. You cannot beat that price and it's like gourmet food. So, so good.
This is Lumpini Park. It's a fantastic way to break up your day and get away from the hustle and bustle of Bangkok. It's right in the middle of the city, which makes it very convenient to get to. There are these Asian water monitor lizards that like to hang out near the water here. They're not really hard to find. You just have to kind of look around towards the water line. They are a bit shy. They're not gonna come up and attack you. So that's not a concern. So current temperatures are 100 degrees Fahrenheit and that's about 38 degrees Celsius. I'm sweating. So I'm going to avoid peak heat during the day and go inside and have a Thai massage which will be amazing, especially after 48 hours of travel and backpacking. Let's finish the Thai massage. Amazing, absolutely amazing. I feel like a million bucks and the traditional Thai massage is different. Oh, it's a little bit painful, but you feel really good afterwards. So, so good. Just freshened up a bit. I'm gonna head upstairs and check out the sky bar to this hotel and see what that looks like. And then right after that, we're going to Koh San Road. Now, Koh San Road is where the backpackers go for the nightlife. We're gonna go check that out for a bit and then hopefully, hopefully if there's time, we will go over to a traditional Bangkok sky bar. So let's go check out the nighttime things. One thing you should know when taking a taxi in Bangkok is that taxi drivers won't always turn their meter on, which means you'll have to work your negotiation game extra when you arrive at your destination. To avoid this, just politely ask them to turn their meter on. Fares are usually very reasonable, but keep in mind that rates can jump during peak traffic times. Kaos on Road is an experience that you have to check off your bucket list and try at least once. Here you'll find lots of street food, buckets of alcohol, loud music, and just people having a great time. You'll also find some pretty interesting treats. Oh my gosh, crazy. And spider too. Now, just so you know, this is not something that the locals eat. It's just for the tourists. On a tastier and less adventurous note, you have to try roti. It's kind of like a crepe, but 10 times yummier. So this is roti, roti, and it's so good. A delicious pastry to have perfect street food option. It's really good. Another thing you have to do before leaving Bangkok is to go to a rooftop bar. Bangkok is huge on sky bars with stunning views of the skyline. I went to Octave, which has a 360 degree view of the city from 49 stories high. The next day is temple day. In order to visit all the must-see temples, you'll want to carve out an entire day. I spent all morning and afternoon devoted to seeing temples and only got around to seeing the Grand Palace, Emerald Buddha, and Wat Arun. Plan on doing a lot of walking in the heat and humidity amongst scads of tour groups. You will be exhausted by the end of this day. This place is full of Thai culture, and if you came to Bangkok and missed the temples, you pretty much didn't come to Bangkok. Super duper important. 
important to remember to get here at 8.30 right when it opens because if you wait until 9 o'clock or after, the masses start pouring in and all the tour groups uh, start piling out and you will get pushed all over the place. So it's, it's a much more enjoyable experience when you can arrive early and not during peak seasons. After you've had time to check out the east side of the Chao Praia River, it's time to head to the west side. Crossing the river via ferry costs three baht, which is a mere nine cents US. After having a quick lunch in Wang Lang, I went to Wat Arun. So this is Wat Aron. It is also known as the Temple of Dawn. It's got really ornate architecture, lots of really interesting design. I'm taking a rest in the shade before I take the trek up. So the good news is I'm off the hook. I don't have to climb those stairs. But the bad news is I don't see, get to see that view and they probably have it closed off because of the number of tourists here. But I've seen it's pretty amazing. Uh, hopefully it'll be open the next time we visit. All right guys, that was Bangkok in two days. I do feel like it was a little bit of a rush. Such a short trip, but I was able to squeeze in, I think enough, it felt like I saw a pretty good deal of what Bangkok has to offer. I am now headed to the PP Islands. That is going to be another vlog. I will leave the link above um, once that's done thanks so much that is all i have for this video if you liked it don't forget to give it a like and if you like travel videos i would encourage that you subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that bell so that you know when new videos are uploaded and i will see you guys in co pp let's go check out the mall homie